I really hope that like somebody snorts one of these condoms and it just gets lost in their right, fucking it's, face. Yeah, it's like <laughs> somewhere behind your face, there's a condom. <laughs> Brunch! Hit it, boys! Do you know what is not for the faint of heart? What is that? A heart attack. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Quick and to the point. Yeah, a lot nice, better than last nice episode's little, open. Nice little joke. Nice. Uh, so I guess we'll just address that. We got in a fight over that. We did. Because you used it as like a jumping off point for like stop fucking around. And I had only gotten oh you asshole responses to that. Which is a good response for a lot of the shit that we pull. But then today, because you were like... People said they were turning off the episode, blah, blah, and that had not been my experience. That's not what I had heard. I, well, I, I'd to gotten be fair. a lot of reaction to it, but not... Well, to be fair, the people who would turn off the episode would come to me to say that and not you. Not necessarily. People come to me with, like, you did something bad. <laughs> Anyway, okay. uh, so I was like, I, so I was like, all right, you're using this as a as a way of like passive aggressively being like calm down, which was cool. We actually got in a very healthy discussion as, re- as a result of that. But then today, I got a text that was like, hey, listening to your last episode, were you on drugs <laughs> in the first five <laughs> minutes? And I was just like, yes. If that'll be easier than having a conversation, yes. Um, anyway, uh, so that was just a little joke about heart attacks. I like it. Um. We have some big news. Uh, Dollaritas are back <laughs> at Applebee's, baby. Have you? What was the last time you ever been to Applebee's? Um, like, I don't know. I, I, there's a very big possibility that I've been to Applebee's once in my life. Really? Yeah, yeah I, it's been a while. Like, if I'm going to go to a shitty one of those restaurants, I'm going to go to Chili's every right, time. Right, Chili's is the go-to, and Chili's isn't g- good. But no, definitely you not. Can, you can survive there. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, Chili's has good margaritas. Yeah. They're, like, good in the sense that they're just loaded with fucking sugar and they taste good. Mm. But there's probably, like, a splash of alcohol in there and they cost f- only $5. Mm. But I'm very interested in Dollaritas and seeing what they're all about. So, uh, you apparently didn't know this. I've said that, I, I thought I'd said this a lot of times in the podcast, uh... I don't drink margaritas because uh, no, I did I'm know not that. A, yeah, I'm, I, I don't drink tequila, and yeah. not in like a ooh, like no tequila for me. Like if there is tequila in that thing, I will not fucking have it. Tequila is not going in my body. That's the fucking. Uh, I'll put a lot of things in this in this body, not tequila. So uh, I saw everyone was tweeting about dollaritas. I think LP was uh, tweeting about dollaritas. It was trending. I throw the suggestion that we should do an episode at. Applebee's and just see how many Dollaritas we can drink during the episode. Yeah, and I was like, that's a good idea, but I wouldn't really be able to participate. And then we came up with the great idea of, I'm going to ask if they can give me a virgin Dollarita, and then I'll probably also just like get beers on the side, yes. and I'd be the first person in the world. I wonder if anyone's ever done that, ordered uh, like well, in a non-ironic way, because I wouldn't be doing it as a joke. I'd be like, I, I'm, we're here to drink Dollaritas. I don't do tequila. So bring me a virgin Dollarita. You brought up an interesting question. Like, what would be in a virgin Dollarita? What is in most virgin drinks? Is it just, like, the mix but not the drink? Yeah, I would assume so. I would assume it's, like, the mix and maybe, like, soda water or something. I learned this week that I don't know what's in pretty much any drinks. Yeah, I did see you tweet out, um, does anybody know what the hell is in Long Island iced tea or... Uh, what's the other one? Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead. Well, did you know the answer to either of those? Uh, the Long Island iced tea. I, I mean, I just like assumed that it was like s- some part iced tea. Oh and no, that so that was the only thing I knew that there's no iced tea in it. Oh really? Yeah, there's no. Well, then tea the in answer it. is no. I don't know. Understand? But I, I thought that the like the whole thing of, about a Grateful Dead was that they just throw. Everything into one, into it, yeah. which I th- so people were like, oh, "I bartended before, and mm-hmm. I could tell you that it's like, no, it's not." Okay, <laughs> um, but actually, uh, a lot of the answers gave me a pretty good hold on Long Island iced teas. I knew that the only thing I knew was in a Long Island iced tea, and I was like five percent confident in it was Coke. I was like, I think that it's a bunch of shit and a little splash of Coke. The and the drug or the juice. The 
uh, the juice. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a nice little juicy short yeah, reference. It was, yeah, baby. I, just <laughs> I laughed out loud. Yeah, so did I. I saw that part <laughs> twice for an odd reason and forgot about it the second time and still laughed out loud. By the way, everybody, we're going to be talking about the Jersey Shore today. Yes, so. we stayed up late to watch Jersey Shore for <laughs> you guys because we're sports fanatics, so we had to get in our full night of sports, and then we did Jersey Shore on top of it. Anyway, a Long Island iced tea, that's how they a would Long say Island. it on, on Long Island. That's how they say it. <laughs> uh, Long Island? Long Island. Long Island. It's, um, it's just all the clears and then a splash of... Uh, of Coke juice. Okay. So it's vodka, <laughs> so it's healthy. tequila. It juice in it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> vodka, <laughs> tequila, gin, whatever. Um, and then Grateful Dead, I think, is just like whatever they have. And then some fucking like razzmatazz or some shit like that. Do you know about the Mothra at the Gaff? No. What's that? It I know is, what the Gaff is. Yeah, you do. Nice uh, bar. It's on the cocktail menu. And it is a quote unquote deadly secret. <gasps> what and is it? I don't By the know. way, that's my phone ringing, uh, and that's not like a, oh, can't you just put it in silent? Because my phone has gotten so bad and so out of control that now it won't even switch into vibrator silent. So it just fucking rings all the time, and you know me, I don't like it any is, communication. It is amazing that you have not killed yourself so yet. It is the fucking worst. So I, so I hear every alert now, so if someone, God forbid, if someone fucking DMs me, and please, any friends listening to this... Don't abuse it as a joke because this is seriously going to con- – this will contribute to my fucking death. So don't do it. If someone DMs me, I get a sound alert on my phone and then I get an email alert because I Ooh. get an email every time someone DMs me and I fucking – oh, I, I hate it. All right. Stop banging on the table because I've already had like uh – fucking i'm already having anxiety watching the microphone turn away from you slowly yeah so and this <laughs> microphone is uh loose and, and you kept I, banging on the minutes you kept banging on the table and it just went worse and worse and worse and it now it's just like a, a completely horizontal to your face you know who would struggle doing this podcast uh fuddleberg nikita khrushchev who's that he was a Russian guy. Took off his shoe, banged it on the table. <laughs> okay. Uh, I said Fuddleberg. That's my attempt at being PFT and <laughs> dropping a historical reference. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work for me. I either. said Fuddleberg because he somehow that guy does uh, like 1,800 podcasts a week <laughs> and does not know how to hold the microphone to his face. When we did the, the Friday Night Lights podcast, it was the uh, most frustrating thing in the world watching him handle a microphone. It was like, I'm trying to think of what that would be. I, I think it would be like uh, being a... Uh, like a, a hot, like an up and coming musician, and the, like the label's like, hey, you know what? Whatever your vision is, whoever you want to work with, we'll bring them in. And you're like, oh my god, geez, let me think. Um, Imagine dragons. Fuck. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're like, oh my god, I would love like this is crazy, but I would love like John Mayer. Or some like would John Mayer would be able to pay for like John Mayer to play guitar on on this song? They're like, yeah. Absolutely. John Mayer's going to do it. You're like, oh, my God, John Mayer's going to play guitar on my song. So he comes in, and he starts, like, laying down the tracks. They're like, okay. And in, all right, here it comes. We're going to punch you in. There you go. And they're going, and you're behind the glass, and you're like, he hasn't plugged his guitar in. <laughs> He's just playing. All, all you can just hear is like the light, the, the the light sound of an electric guitar that isn't plugged in. He, this, he is we, not plugged in his we guitar. Say something. Yeah, and then should you're like, say dude, plug in your guitar, and he's like, oh, definitely. <laughs> And the and tape he just, starts. And, he, and then he just keeps playing without <laughs> plugging in the guitar. No, he starts playing and just like slowly throw it to take. You're like, is he, he is unplugging his guitar. <laughs> Why is the guitar the, the cord, How the has this guy is, ever is made a record? slowly coming out of his guitar. How has this guy ever made a record? He p- unplugs his doing guitar it halfway through. He's playing beautifully, doing everything better than I could. His guitar is not plugged in. <laughs> that, is a, that is a great comparison. Yeah. I like it. I told you that when I was in college, all my teachers, all my fucking teachers, would always point out that like I, they thought that I was like a savant with analogies. Really? Yeah. It. Uh, I can it, see it. Every now and then in adulthood, if someone's like, "Dude, your analogy game is pretty, pretty sweet," I always have to act like I don't know that, or like that I haven't heard that before. I don't think I have the best analogies in the world, but I'm good at saying, "Oh, this is like that." Here's an analogy for that. Mm-hmm. It's like when people tell me that I look like Matt Damon. I have to, I have to like 
pretend. Ooh. It's 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 difficult because you mean the actor Matt Damon? Yeah, <laughs> uh, which that is, guy that has huh. become more problematic in recent years uh, with Matt Damon not being able to shut his goddamn mouth and saying stupid things. Oh, that's him. right. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a tough tough few months stretch for me. But like, it's difficult because I always say, yeah, I know, mm-hmm. and that just sounds like I'm an asshole. Right. Because, like, it's it's a lot of the times it's like a compliment. He's a handsome man. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, yeah, I know. So I yeah. kind of have to, like, pretend like I've never heard that before. Yeah. People are like, oh, Mr. Bean. <laughs> oh, oh, I bet you get that all the time. Like, then then why just say it? Because now we have now I have to act like, oh, no, that's okay. And you could just fucking said anything. God damn. Yeah. It's I feel worse for them. Um, so speaking of Dollaritas. Mm. I think we're going to do that. You talked me into it. Are, are we? I'm, yeah. I will be so excited if we do that. Yeah. Because we've been talking about doing on-location recordings forever. Yeah. I still want to do one in a the movie theater, yeah. in an empty movie theater. I still want to do one like at bars or at like actual brunch. Yeah. And now I for sure want to do one in a, out in Applebee's. Yeah. Um, so we had we can lightly shed light on this. Uh, earlier this week, it was actually as like a result of like a long discussion we had after the what was going on in the uh, beginning of last week's episode. We were like, I feel like we, that's becoming more of a trend. By the way, where we have like a we have like a hashing out like every like two months, but not necessarily like a hashing. I think it's, that like we've both we've just both this like I'm not I don't want people to panic like just. Whether it's because we've had other shit going on or whatever, we like brunch just hasn't fucking felt the same. Yeah. And not always in a bad way. Like, we've had some fucking cool, weird episodes, but like, we're. We don't have the consistent magic. Yeah. As like a lot. Yeah. A lot of the times before. Which is. Or it just feels like. Like, I always want to do new, like, fun stuff, and it feels like we're kind of plateauing, maybe, or just, like, in a rut. Well, it's, I could say, honestly, I would say a, a rut is a fair thing to say, and it sounds scary or whatever, but I think it's actually forced us to kind of refocus our energies on it, because it's sort of turned into, because we both have jobs and lives and everything where it's like all right i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this and then twice a week i'm gonna do brunch whereas usually it's, it's like we plan around brunch else is planned happens around, around brunch. brunch like that is 100 percent like where the the pro- the quote-unquote problem has been like we are fitting brunch in around our lives exactly whereas like our lives fit around brunch beforehand yeah which is weird because people always ask me like how brunch is going and i i I usually just like fucking end up not necessarily like name dropping or whatever, but just like all like I I'm, I've said this Word before. Like, I went from the guy who doesn't do a podcast to the guy who only talks about his podcast. Yes, and I'm like, oh, it's good. We've got a lot of ideas, blah blah. blah. And they're like, oh, like what? And we're like, oh, well, we built this thing, and blah. And they're like, oh, well, who do you have coming on lately? And it's like, oh, fuck, we haven't really. We haven't really had a guest in a little bit. Like, we have Randy and Lena a lot. And so, I don't know. Like, I'm just wondering. Like, so the, the other day I tweeted, what are some of your favorite brunch episodes? And people gave uh, us answers. And I listened to a bunch of them. And, like, we, we're we for sure not making up that it's been different. Like, yeah. um, like, we fucking sound like the two funniest people in the world on, like, Turtle Sex. <laughs> Like honestly, I, I listened to, to to us, and it sounds like because, and I thought this before. Um, you know the uh, the whatever brothers, I forget their names. They're uh, two dudes. They wear funny hats, and they just do stand up comedy together. They just stand on a stage. And they oh, just do the, the black kids. Yeah, yeah. What are their names? I have no idea. Um, but like, I listen to those I old said episodes. Kids. I'm pretty sure they're like in their like 30s. Yeah, but I'm like, that's what brunch generally is. So. I don't know if it's if it's like an apology or whatever because we for sure haven't been trying to not be on our A game, but I don't know. It's been odd, and I think that we also fell into some habits. Like I got into the thing of I got really into save everything for the episode, save everything for the episode, and uh, I don't think that that's good for. I think that in a way that's good because you end up holding back. Um, Stuff doesn't get stale or whatever, but if you if you get a funny idea and like I want to text you about it, and then I don't do that, then that's like a time that we did not 
continue being Pete and Deej. Yeah. So like we're usually so there has been like a disconnect in between episodes between me and you. Like I feel like communication hasn't been as good. It's fucking weird. Yeah, and that's why like I don't know if you noticed. Like I've asked you to hang out a lot because I'm like we need to be like fucking like bonding in some sort. Like I don't think like we like fucking dislike each other. We're no. not, like honestly like not be gushy or whatever. Like you're for sure one of my best friends. Um, but yeah, it's just been odd and like i've wondered uh i brought this up i'm like i wonder like if you blame me for if we have plateaued or shit like that so i don't know it's been this has been like a we it's i feel way better after the discussion we had the other day but also i'm like aware now that i'm in the couple that just went to couples therapy yeah i mean that's what i was gonna say like we like when i first brought that up i we Seems like we're kind of having those discussions more, but I feel better after we have them. Yeah, which is good. But then we end up getting back to having those discussions. So uh, hopefully that cycle ends at some point soon. You did. You brought up that I'm your, one of your best friends. Mm-hmm. One thing that we talked about today uh, was what is the perfect number of friends for an adult? Now this comes because Chance the Rapper tweeted, "Would you rather have thirty million dollars or thirty million loyal friends?" And I like his heart's in the right place. Thirty mil- million loyal friends, he says. Thirty million loyal friends or thirty million dollars. On the outset, that seems like the easiest question of all time. Yeah. Uh, $30 million for sure. Um, And, like, the thought of even having... I said this to you. The thought of even having 30 friends makes me want to fucking vomit. I can. Why would anybody want 30 million friends? 30 million loyal friends. Here's the answer. And if they're loyal... That means that there's 30 million people who expect loyalty from you. That's true. <laughs> Imagine that fucking pressure. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. We just so, talked about how loyalty to one fucking friend is tough. So here's where it becomes maybe a little bit dif- more difficult of a question. Uh, I still think that the answer is going to be fucking anything other than 30 million friends. But if you have 30 million loyal friends and you ask all your friends for like five bucks... Get $150 million as opposed to $30 million. Yes, true, but that would be such a fucking thing. It's not worth the extra I wouldn't money. Ask, I w- like, seriously, ask, let the, put this challenge out there. Ask 10 of your friends tomorrow for $5. See if you can get $50 from asking 10 of your friends for $5. I bet that is. Show us an the receipts, excru- bitch. Yeah, we want receipts. <laughs> I bet that is a and fucking then donate that money to brunch. endeavor. No, honestly. Ask 10 friends for $50. No, 10 friends for, for $5. For $5 each. And if they give it to you, then um, donate it to beardathon.com slash Bruins slash Jeff Israel slash profile dot ASPX. Very easy. Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Again, that's beardathon.com slash Bruins slash Jeff Israel slash profile dot ASPX. And... That would be a cool little move. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, if that's too excruciating, because I think that would be a really excruciating way to get $50, then just donate $5 to beardathon.com slash Bruins slash Jeff Israel slash profile dot ASPX. Now, quick little side note. That's Jeff Israel's Beardathon thing. I don't know if you could tell from that. Uh, and he was tweeting about how people were donating to it and how he really wants to raise money and how because this year he's doing the positive Bruins fans thing, fan thing, he really wants to have the, the most donations. So I tossed him 20 bucks thinking that I was hot shit. Yeah. Uh, we, we each tossed him 20 bucks. Ah, false. I gave him 10 bucks. You did? Yeah. Okay. So Times are tough over We here. We tossed him 30 bucks. Yeah. So pretty, pretty sweet move. Uh, and then Feidelberg <laughs> donated... Forty dollars as Tuka Rask and left the comment, "I'm good." Now I I donated uh, anonymously and then left the comment from DJ. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you? Uh, did, how did you donate it? Uh, I donated anonymously, mm-hmm. and um, my comment was uh, just a young gun with a quick fuse. Nice. I so. I'm a huge. This is very Kirby enthusiasm, but I'm a big fan of doing things anonymously, but leaving a little trace as to who. It oh could yeah, be. like people you want gonna, the credit. Like if you see anonymous from DJ, if I want to leave, you know things... my sense of humor. You're gonna think, hmm, wait a second, <laughs> I bet that's from DJ. Yeah, I mean, it's best to donate anonymously and then tell everybody about it, or like tell not everybody about it, but like make sure people find out so that you they get you get extra credit for having a little bit of humility. Yes, that's true. Um, so. 
The Chance the Rapper tweet got us to thinking. And again, donate to beardathon.com slash Bruin slash Jeff Israel slash profile dot ASPX. ASPX is important. Get that part right. So would you rather $30 million or 30 million loyal friends? Uh, you said the 30 friends is tough. And we got to thinking, what's the, uh, the correct number of friends? What's the good number of friends? I thought of the max number of friends. And the max number of friends I could have is 22. <laughs> okay. Here's Explain a breakdown. It. Yep. A best friend where you are. A best friend somewhere else. Callan. Yep. Two different groups of three other people you hang out with, a couple you're friends with, and I'm sorry, I'm just ending all sorts of sentences with prepositions here, uh, a significant other with one really cool friend, so far that brings it up to 12 people, and then 10 other people just like, scattered around the world. Could wild be cards. Anywhere. Wild yes, cards. Yes, totally. Like, uh, oh, like this person lives... Uh, like I know this person from work. I know this person from this thing. I we went to college together. That's ten. Ten's a lot of people, and that brings it to twenty-two people. That is so many fucking people. Yeah, that's that's a, a way higher than the number I expected. Like I was originally thinking that I probably want. Well, I'm saying that's the max ideal. Looking at like four. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say like I I was thinking single digits. Yeah. For the number of friends that I want. Yeah. But, like, I guess if we're counting, we're kind of counting acquaintances here. So that's the thing. Like, work friends or uh, I don't know. I guess not really because work friends, if unless you suck, you should have – or unless, like, you, you own a small business and there's only, like, one other person, you should have a lot of uh, work people with whom you're friendly. And mm. also – so – I don't know. Unfortunately, and this is not a brag, I have way more than 22 friends. <laughs> and that, and I would love to change that. If you got any <laughs> tips, pass them along. But um, I, I need like at least 11 friends for a fantasy league. Um, so what? So, right. Or, but not even that. Like, I can have, I would like like eight friends for a fantasy league and then I just have two fucking schmoes that I don't know who, like, I just want to kick their ass when I, when I meet, when I match so up with them every week. I am very close with the other 13 guys in my fantasy league. Yeah. Those aren't all my friends. See? Very close with them. We get together. We do stuff together. It's kind of fun to be in a fantasy league where you kind of fucking hate a couple people and you're oh, like, yeah. I want to kick we that have person's pe- fucking ass. Dude, the stories that my fantasy, the things that have gone on in my <laughs> fantasy league, it is unbelievable. It is, you couldn't make a fucking reality show about this because it would just be too unbelievable even for reality. <laughs> the pettiness, the shit that people have pulled. Your someone, fucking newsletters at yeah, the end of each week. Someone fucking, uh, Someone didn't like a trade, so they deleted uh, a fantasy basketball league that everyone in the league was in. Just fucking deleted it. That I can't even believe that's like a, a capability to oh, just yeah. delete a fucking league. Dude, right. well, think of what Trump can do well, if he doesn't like a trade. Okay. <laughs> uh, so like eight, eight friends for a fantasy league. Uh, you need, I think you need like half a dozen friends for going out mm-hmm. uh and then Half a dozen that's so many I like, not like, at the same time oh, right. but like yeah. in rotation yes. to yeah. text to see what they're well, doing that's why that i night. said like two groups of three two different groups of three Even- okay. every now yeah. and then if you need to you can combine members from them ideally three not. is a fucking great number yeah for like people. going out like yep. if you're going out with four people Works you can get a table wise, somewhere yep. uh man so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say like ideal Probably around fifteen. Fifteen's a fifteen's a solid number. Fifteen with like four or five that are like in the elite rotation. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Who? If anybody responded with the thirty million friends, 30 I hope. Million friends? I hope to God that their motivation for that was money. I wouldn't want. I'm trying to think of how thirty million friends could work out. Like, ima- imagine if you went it on Twitter wouldn't. one day and had fucking 30 million followers. Oh, my God. I, I would, would never delete, go back on Twitter. I would just delete it right there. Uh, so, Deej, mm-hmm. quick little break. You want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable, right? I already do. Oh, yeah. It's because I wear. Me undies. Me uh, that, perf- undies. that perfect balance is hard to find, so don't sacrifice style or comfort. Check out MeUndies.com and find the best pair of underwear in the world. MeUndies is the most comfortable pair of underwear that you'll ever own, made from some sustainably sourced natural soft fabric that is three times, count it, three times softer than cotton. 
I own MeUndies. They're awesome. They are superior to every other pair of underwear that I own. I swear to God. I swear by MeUndies. Uh, for the fellas, MeUndies Diamond Seamed Pouch cradles your jewels and gives your stuff the support it needs without feeling too tight. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. So to get 20% off your first pair and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash brunch. They're so sure that, that you'll love their underwear, they offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. They, lo- they guarantee you'll love your first pair or your money back. It's a no-brainer. 20% off, free shipping, 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash brunch. That's MeUndies.com slash brunch. This is a limited time offer, so what are you waiting for? Start wearing the best underwear of your life. It changed my life. It's time to let MeUndies change yours. Go to MeUndies.com slash brunch right now. Did you hear? The underwear will change your life. It um, is life-changing. Yes. I uh, I splurged a bit this week. What would you do? I bought something big. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Let's hear it. Something high-end. Ooh. I bought a good, expensive ironing board. Huh. Yeah. I'm, I... So I need you to enlighten me, like, as to what makes, uh, like, a luxury ironing board. So this is important because you're about to get out the crib, but you live in your own space. And I was thinking, like, man, maybe I'll even get Pete a nice ironing board as a housewarming. You have to get me a housewarming gift. Ooh, that's famous last words. (laughs) (laughs) You have to keep it in your house. We're going to go down to 21 friends? Yes, exactly. Um, So I'm... Big, I, I love ironing. Big into ironing. I don't love ironing. I love uh, ironed clothes. Yes. I just, I can't, I don't do well if I'm wearing a shirt and I see, like, right now, for example, this shirt, um, and now this will explain why it's not ironed, but this shirt, um, the around where the buttons are, where the thing, you know, where sometimes it folds the wrong way. Yeah. Like, I can't do shit like that. Okay. It's got to be, if... I'm the mess here. <laughs> the clothes can't also... The clothes also... need to make up for you being the mess. Yes. They can't add to the mess. Exactly, exactly. So I'm a big ironer. Uh, you, I know that you're big into iron clothes. You're big into the spray. spray. The wrinkle release spray. That will seriously change your life. Yeah. Meandies and wrinkle spray are yeah. all you need in your goddamn closet. I, I love me the, the wrinkle spray, but I moved into a new apartment like... Now a few months ago, I guess, and I haven't gotten an ironing board, so it's been I, my life's kind of been out of. Have sorts. you been like? Have you been ironing on flat surfaces? No, I haven't been ironing. Okay, and I think is, I think not ironing is better than ironing on like household flat surfaces. No, I don't think you're supposed that, to do that. I've seen people do that. That sounds like it sounds very dangerous and very bad. <laughs> yes, that's. Uh, I think that's some sort of degree of arson. Quick, but, <laughs> quick little. Uh, Quick little side note. Uh, I'll let you get back to your ironing board story. It's a good one. <laughs> uh, how do you put on dress shirts? Because that was like the big conversation on hockey Twitter this what week. What the fuck was that? Because you just a year you ago unbutton them, you put them on, and you button it. Yeah, but like the question was, it was sparked last year when Nick Bedino was like, uh, "I'm just seeing some of my teammates button from the oh, bottom up or up. down." Yeah, I think we've had that discussion. I go. Uh, top down same yeah so i i think i like it's i guess it's popular to go bottom up and top to bottom so like some people said they went fucking middle out which is very (laughs) which is fucking crazy um but the one that really rocked my world was like multiple nhl players said that they left their shirts buttoned and pulled them over their head like a goddamn pullover that is that is Really, that is really insane. Awful. That's you know what that reminds me of. You uh, shouldn't even be able to do that. What? What uh, is it in? Oh, it's in Parks and Rec where they drink water from the water fountain by going up to the water fountain and putting their mouth oh, over yeah, the thing. Yes. That's what that's like. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool, a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> What they the just fuck fu- are you doing? Yeah, what I saw the the fucking Parks and Rec clip is fucking hilarious. Where they just like suck the water. Yeah, from. They just put their face over it. It's the dumbest thing in the world. Yeah, but, but it's the- very similar. By the way, another good analogy from this guy. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah, no, like the idea, just like the visual of somebody pulling a fully buttoned dress shirt over their head, and like being able to do that 
is wrong in itself. That oh. means that you're wearing dress shirts that are way too fucking big. Well, I guess it assumes that they leave like two buttons unbuttoned and then pull it over. Even but still, that's... like you should be wearing like a slim fitting yeah. dress shirt most of the time. If you're like an athlete in good shape, right. you should be wearing slim fit and you can't pull that like directly over your head. One of them said that they like they've ripped a bunch of dress shirts in the past doing it, but they still do it. So what Idiots. a bunch of fucking psychos. Stupid. Ugh. Uh not a tip that I would give. Yeah. Back to the back to the iron. <laughs> back to the board, important though. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um so I got uh I so a good ironing board is awesome. Because when you think of an ironing board, so think of like when you go to a hotel, you bust out the... I, I hope people iron at hotels, because I for sure do. Yeah. That's that's a bigger risk, though, because a lot of times the iron there sucks. Sucks, and it but, can ruin your clothes. Right. But my way of seeing it is, as long as you get like a $30 Black & Decker iron, you can survive. Mm-hmm. I think that if you're going to spend ironing-wise... You spend the thirty dollars on the Black and Decker fucking thirty dollar iron, and then drop like like eighty to a hundred on like a dope ass ironing board. That's how much fucking ironing boards cost. Well, you how get, much did your ironing board cost? Uh, it was like it was like eighty five. What? Yeah, you so spent eighty five dollars on an ironing board. I was board? gonna get. I was getting a good one. I was getting a Holy good uh, shit. Yeah. So I splurged and I was very excited and it came today and it sucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> it fucking sucks. So I'm sending it back and that's going to stink sending back an uh, the box that came was so fucking huge. I don't I'm not a big mail guy, <laughs> yeah. so I get everything sent to work so they bring it to <laughs> oh my me. God. Which is like a total asshole thing. Yeah, it is. So like the the woman from the front desk came over walking. She was like, oh, "This fucking a big frail one. old yeah. woman." She's been like, "DJ's yeah. mail is and here." I was like, oh great, my ironing board. <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Um, so it stinks. The one I got was because they were like, "It's a great ironing board. Plus, it's unbelievable for portability. It's got a thing on it, and you can hang it up in a closet." I was like, "This is the sickest ironing board ever." The only cool thing about it is that you can hang it up. And I'll admit, that's quite cool. But that thing is flimsy as fuck. What I want with an ironing board is some fucking heavy-ass shit. I want it tough to set up because it's so heavy. I want to run it over with my truck. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I want fucking, uh, not Billy Mays. What's the new guy? Uh, uh, hi, Phil Bud. Yeah. What's the flex day? Flex the yeah. guy. Here's how I run it up. I killed my wife. <laughs> <laughs> like, that guy. <laughs> that guy for sure does weird shit in his free time. Yeah. He's like, hey, this tape is the strongest tape in the world. Don't believe me? I I'm saw this bone in half. I'm going to hang from the Empire State Building with just holding out of this fucking tape. Watch. Watch me. <laughs> You're like, dude, don't do that. <laughs> He does. He fucking he saws a boat in half, tapes it back together, and then goes in alligator infested water. What <laughs> like that's not a fucking risk that's worth taking. We'll trust you, and also no one's gonna be using it on that a way. Saw in half yeah. boat. Boat. It's like, hey, want this boat? It's gonna sell you real cheap. Only one problem. I sawed it's, it in half. It's been sawed in half. That's okay. I got flex tape. Uh, you know, w- flex tape should make fucking um, the dick tape, where Whoops. you just put the fucking oh, yeah. tape on the You're your pee hole. Pregnant. <laughs> yeah, the safest fucking safest fucking birth control in the world. You're never peeing again. Uh, Saw your dick in half. Yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, birth control, uh, the the condom sniffing craze is oh, a thing. Yeah. Uh, kids it's are tough sni- week for you. Yeah. Kids are uh, sniffing condoms, and because we took away their fucking Tide Pods. That's right. Uh, we brought this on ourselves. Yeah, I really want to tweet. Uh, finally, no one's going to give me looks when I buy Magnums because <laughs> I got a big that nose. That honker. Yeah, I, guess. <laughs> I wonder if kids with big nose actually are getting Magnums, or if they're going, or if like they're they're new to it, they're getting like the the super thin ones mm, because they're the like I, ecstasy. Yeah. But what the thin ones, I feel like, could get lost somewhere along the way <laughs> because you're taking in less there. I I really hope that, like, somebody snorts one of these condoms and it just gets lost in right, their fucking face. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere behind your face, there's a condom. 
<laughs> it's like it's, it wouldn't be the stupidest thing. I mean, they're, they're children sniffing condoms. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like it's you deserve it. Yeah, I just want like I want there to be a story. Like fifty years from now, it's like a seventy-year-old person. And they're like, we found a sniff. fucking condom in this seventy-year-old's face. And he was like, well, when I was a kid, we're into some fucking snorting condoms. Well, uh, I wonder if because sometimes uh, people will check the condom count. They'll say like, "Ooh, I was here One's yesterday, missing? and there was this many." And Who the now fuck does I'm that? Back. You haven't seen a fucking movie? No. Have you seen The Wood? No. That's how uh, that's, that's how Stacy's uh, girl catches him cheating. They're starting to have sex. And she's like, I'll get the rubbers. And she, I'll get a rubber. And she goes over and she's like, why is one of your rubbers missing? And she was like, when I was here last time, there was this many. And now there's this many. Who the so, fuck takes count of condoms? Smart girls. What the hell? Smart girls who are... Well, this girl had reason to... Well, that can never happen again, because if that ever happens to somebody who's cheating, they yeah, can just say, like, I, I was, snorted I a condom. Yeah. I fucking snorted it, and it got lost to my yeah. face. What do you want? Because so. they could say, like, well, then if you snorted it, show it to me in the trash. She'd be like, no. In my face. <laughs> it's, it's up there. Swallowed never it. Never to be found again. Uh, what does that feel like, having a condom come out of <laughs> <in> your mouth? <laughs> God, it's so disgusting. This is fucking meme culture, though. Like everything is. Look how stupid shit yeah. can be. Which is which made this a very funny week because it was a big week for the. If you can't handle me at my this, you don't deserve me at this. So over and that, people like, decided, two seconds into right, it. Well, people decide to point out like, hey, this meme is really fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what a meme is. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're going to for a rude awakening when you figure out what the rest of the memes but are. But, like, none of those ones were funny. Like, people just used it to be like, hey, this is what I used to look like now. This is what I, I look like. I'm it, hot I, now. The second I saw it, I used it to mock itself. The meme. Yeah. I, I, I did the first one ever today. And what it was, was it? the uh, Trump being scared by a bald eagle and then ah. a bald eagle sitting on James Paxton's shoulder. Ah. And uh, so I, I, did a I found it was, a, it was a good time to do it. I did. Uh, if you can't handle me at my the singles churches has released from this album so far. You yeah, don't, really, you don't I liked, me I liked, the, I liked it because thing. you didn't post pictures. You just <laughs> yeah. fucking did the words. Because that's what it used to be back in the day. The, like the original form of that meme used to be like, if you can't handle me at my whatever, you don't yeah. hear me at my this. Yeah. And then it became you versus the guy she told you not to worry about because yeah. that's the exact same fucking meme yeah now. we have not yet spoken about uh the yodeling walmart kid oh my god that kid has got the lovesick blues let me tell you oh my and let me tell you uh, we're talking about memes that we want to die pretty quickly yeah i want that kid to never die ever we've checked in daily with each other saying hey Still want still this hot thing on this to last, kid? <laughs> last forever. Still sending each other. Uh, still got the hots for this youngster. Yes. Uh, yes. Which when was the last meme that we honestly? I think the last meme that we were constantly sending each other the good ones we found was uh, the Tingo Scrap. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> that was that, for a while. That was a heater. Yeah. Uh, but this one is great. I haven't totally been able to participate in the uh, SpongeBob ones. Because I don't get all the references. Yeah. But this one makes me really fucking happy. And I think this one has staying power because it really can be applied to everything. As long as there's a video, yeah. you can put it to it. Uh, T-Pain posted a thing of, uh, it was, quote, T-Pain washed AF, <laughs> yeah. me. And then it was him dancing. And it was awesome. It got like 65,000 retweets. So I just tweeted the same thing. Just dubbed it over. And put that over kid. it. And it was awesome. I started to make, but it was too... It was too much work. The uh, the Bruins put out the thing of their fans singing Living on a Prayer, and it was the fucking worst. Yep. I tried to make it sound like the, a whole crowd was <laughs> singing uh, the, uh, the yodeling the, uh, kid? lovesick blues. Yeah, like the yodeling kid. But it was just too fucking nah. hard to do all that copying and pasting. But I love it. Uh, there have been fucking rap remixes. There's been trap remixes. There's been fucking uh, dubstep remixes. And... A lot of those remixes, to be honest They're with you, really are good. are bangers. They're great. The They're one, really one you good. Sent me, it was like uh, when the uh, <laughs> what, what is it when the the yodeling Walmart kid remix comes, comes on, on at the, the club. club. It's, it's like it a person jumping off a, a person building, falling like twenty stories, and then landing in a split and getting up and dancing. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's the best. But what does this mean for Thunder? Does this does this kid have the chutzpah mm. to steal? Thunder from, from Thunder from like our space. Yes and no. No, I think that, I, I honestly think that Thunder is never going to go away. Because, also, 
big week for Thunder right. with the with the goddamn Jersey Shore premiere. We'll yeah. get to that in a little bit. Yeah. But I wanted to get to, to uh, tips because we have a special guest to give tips, and it's Bill O'Reilly. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the guy that you want giving tips. I'm about uh, to lose a lot of weight. <laughs> Bill God. O'Reilly with his Twitter tip of the day. Uh, today was if you stop drinking sugary beverages, you will shed pounds without Marie Osmond coming to your house. There are plenty of drinks with less than 15 grams of sugar, in parentheses, read the label, or drink water with lemon. Saves you money when you eat out as well. So that's uh, that's Bill O'Reilly giving health and dating tips. Saves you money when you eat out. Really? Yeah. I've been just, I've been, I've been dropping coin on water. Just assuming, and they're like, hey, wait a second, why, I'm like, no, no, no. Yes, I didn't. I, the water is expensive. Uh, I mean, like riveting stuff to say. Hey, uh, if you drink soda and a bunch of shit with sugar, yeah, that's less healthy than drinking natural water. And his solution is: there are drinks with less than fifteen grams of sugar. There are a lot of drinks with no grams of sugar. They're just like fucking drink water, dude, or drink like I don't know. I guess all my the the solutions are. Uh, like water fruit waters <laughs> yeah. like we, i think we've just got watermelon water yeah i love that shit. obviously it's so expensive you need 30 million friends with dollars to give you, you know, i mean i will but. say i do love bill o'reilly uh getting shit canned from his job yep from for just being like an absolute scumbag yeah. and then pivoting to advice yes on twitter unsolicited uh we've got this one uh someone responded uh here's the tip of the day uh Wait, where is it? Uh, don't sex- don't sexually harass women. Then you don't have to pay expensive settlements. Exactly. Yeah. So he wouldn't have to save money drinking water <laughs> if he just didn't sexually harass women. Here's the tip of the day. Stay with your core beliefs even if life hits you hard. Don't change positive things. Stay tough. But one of his core beliefs was being a shitty guy. So maybe Tip of the day, that. when drafting NDAs during settlements with yeah. women you've sexually harassed, make sure the text doesn't require they're lying under oath or other late illegal activities for the terms to be met. Wait, they're lying under oath? I don't understand that. Uh, the text, I guess, required them to lie under oath. The the woman had to lie under oath? I suppose, like, to not violate the NDA. I don't get that. What? <laughs> Like, if you sign an NDA and then yeah. you say it in court, does that violate the NDA? I guess that's what they're saying. Oh, oh. But I don't understand where lying under oath comes in. Like, because they would have to say that the NDA didn't exist? Or, the, no, they would just, like, if they were if they signed the NDA and yes. then went to court. Yes. And then, like. Acknowledged the NDA? No, or, like, just, like, lied. Yeah. About what happened because they signed the NDA and they couldn't tell the truth about what happened. Oh. Odd. Have you ever signed an NDA? We've discussed this. I have. Have you? Yep. Oh, yeah, you have. Uh, I have not. Hmm. It was like, uh, but it was more of like a... It was a work NDA. Yeah. It was not like, a sexual harassment NDA. Hey, I got a job idea for you. Sign this first. And I signed it. And then he was like, my idea is I don't give you a job. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, and you, you can't, can't tell, tell anybody anyone how much I just burned you. <laughs> But uh, I didn't sign anything, so I'm going to tell everybody. My favorite NDA story is the Fire Festival, where they wrote yeah. that fucking uh, oh, the review. Baby, like they, they didn't <laughs> ask anyone to sign NDA. Yeah. That's the best kicker in a long time. Just throwing baby in there is so. All good. right, so let's get to the the, jury the Shore. crux. Yeah, bringing that word back. Uh, the crux of this episode, we watched the Jersey Shore. But you know what we didn't do? Hmm. Well, actually. I kind of did. Yeah. So our original plan was that we weren't going to watch the whole thing. You were going to watch an hour. Mm-hmm. I was going to watch an hour. Guess what? That's right. It was a two-hour premiere for the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Uh, and then we were going to tell each other about it. Yes. But uh, I got hung up at work, mm-hmm. and I assumed this would happen. You watched the whole thing. Huh? I watched um, essentially most. I watched most of it. I would say I watched an hour and a half of it. Okay. The, so, second, the last half hour seemed to be Snooky worried about losing a ring. Yep. That was the perfect time for me to tap out. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and tell me about the first half. Okay. Well, first of all, shoot. Should we discuss our uh, our experience with the Jersey Shore to oh, kind of yeah, set yeah, that up a little bit? Yeah, let's get into that. I uh, So I love the Jersey Shore. I watched all the episodes probably multiple times. Uh, and by all the episodes, I mean like... The ones that matter. How many seasons did they do? I would 
if I had to guess, I don't know, but like four. Right. I think they did four. I think that I probably did three or parts of three. Um, did you do them all? Yeah, um, so I I did like the it got first. Unbearable. Yeah. It was just like the, maybe the, I think the I did three. I think I did three, or maybe I did four, but like just didn't care about it in the fourth one. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I was definitely done with it by the end. Mm. Um, but it was. I was in college when it was on, hmm. uh, and it was like appointment television every Thursday to kind of sit down and watch the Jersey Shore, hmm. uh, and fuck if that wasn't like an iconic reality show. Yeah. I know that like the- We would the, watch The Office. That was our thing. Really? College, okay. Yeah. Um, but like, I, I, I don't like trashy TV as much hmm. as a lot of people do, but there is just something about the mixture of these individuals that yeah. like- it is just so perfect. I was thinking about it today because I it just felt weird watching the Jersey Shore in, in 2018, and especially now that they're like super old and shit. And I was still into it. It's just like the mixture of their personalities that it is like that is something that doesn't work 95 percent of the time because, or at least not for me, because I would hate a bunch of those people. But right. like, there's something about this mixture. That I fully embraced. I was actually thinking, like, what would a what would like a brunch style Jersey Shore kind of show be like? And I honestly think it would just be like you get a huge house, and it's like just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> like just we like, like hang out and watch like TV, drinking beers, watching TV, yeah. and like making jokes. Like we go into the club, yeah, and they cut to us. We're just like at a bar watching a hockey game. <laughs> Talking sports. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're beating up the beat. It's, uh, we're just putting stuff we would, in the jukebox. <laughs> yeah. We would be we would be uh, at the house. We'd be watching movies. Yes. And uh, probably playing a few games here and there. Yep. And then time to go to the club, be at the bar, jukebox, sports, come back, probably like eat some late night snacks, watch another movie, and then go to bed. And that would be literally our lives the entire time. Honestly, I just thought – so th- that's, by the way – What's going to happen we, with our pact when we just get old and live together? Yep. That's what's going to happen. But you just described basically my ideal bachelor party. Because I've been to bachelor parties like that where it's like, hey, we get to the house, we just drink some beers, grill for a little bit. If there's a bar in play, maybe we'll go to a bar, but let's focus on the house and just be drinking beers, put on a movie. Fuck <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I, awesome. That's really like. I have like so come we're up to definitely like not getting a show from whatever, MTV. Just like <laughs> sitting around, like drinking a beer with like a friend, watching a movie. I'm like, dude, why don't you like do something? Go out, have fun. But when I'm doing that, man, that is so much fun. No, I think one of the biggest things that I'm looking forward to uh, finally moving out and having a roommate that I like is just kind of like, you know, well, not to say that I don't like my mom. Yeah, I love like, my yeah. mom. <laughs> but what are you uh, saying about the dogs? I'm just I'm looking forward to the kicking it. Yeah. Kicking it time. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that's my experience with Georgia Shore. Uh, I loved it for a while. Mm. But, uh, you know, I wasn't fully ready to embrace it when it came back. Apparently, like, I thought... I learned today that it came back. Same. Yeah. And like, I learned... This morning. And I learned today that everybody was fucking excited about it. Yeah. And I thought it was kind of, like, gross that people were ex- that excited about Jersey Shore in 2018. Well, it's just because we're but all you know so what? fucking dumb. Here we are. Yeah. We watched the Jersey Shore. All right, so catching you up. Uh, Snooky and JWoww have had the most plastic surgery ever. Yeah, I did notice the uh, the lips were the lips on on Snooky were, were out like, of control. Yeah, yeah. JWoww still looks pretty good, to be honest. I don't think either of them look good, but to each their own. I think that uh, I, like I'm, I'm not besmirching them for getting their plastic no. surgery or whatever. Do what you I want. I mean, they had uh, plastic. They look crazy different. They had plastic surgery the first time around. Yeah. Or JWoww, certainly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I will say JWoww uh, aged better than I thought she would because, like, with all the tanning mm-hmm. and all, like, just how trashy they are, yeah. I just did not expect them to age well at all. Mm. And JWoww looks better than I expected. All right. Uh, the situation is facing serious charges of tax evasion. Oh, yeah. He faces up to five years in prison. He says that he has a girlfriend and that they were college sweethearts. And while before you have time to say, wait a second, did he go to college? He distracts you again with a lot more tax evasion talk. <laughs> because the first like 20 minutes, no matter what is going on, everything is about the situation in like, being in serious trouble. Okay. Uh, they, but wait, but before we move on from the situation, mm-hmm. having a college sweetheart, I don't want to glaze over that. Yeah. Because 
that wasn't even the college part wasn't even the part that like kind of threw me off the sweetheart it's the sweetheart part does he know how that works i'm pretty sure to have a college sweetheart don't you have to stay with them since college no not really no i mean like when you say like oh they were high school sweethearts it means that they they dated in high school really yeah so like aaron hernandez for example married his high school sweetheart and he had a different girlfriend in it's all it's obviously very common when you say like they were high school sweethearts to mean they stayed together the whole time or whatever but no it just means your high school boo thing interesting i i did not know that uh yeah so the girls uh facetime him to be like hey are you excited because they all get uh they all get lunch together and they're all so excited about the thing and they FaceTime him. They haven't spoken to him in so long. And they're, like, screaming in the restaurant. They're like, oh, my God, so excited to see you. What are you doing? And he's like, I just got off the phone with my lawyer. It was about the tax evasion thing. <laughs> and uh, I had a very serious talk and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, just <laughs> spend one second on anything else. Um, Vinny says that he is feeling the best he has ever felt physically, mentally, then he mocks gay people by saying emotionally, spiritually, <laughs> didn't need to do that. Okay. Um, he's so, on the keto diet. The keto diet? Keto. Keto? Yeah. What's the, that? The keto diet is where you just sit there and smoke cigarettes <laughs> yes. and you lose a lot of weight. <laughs> yes. Um, no, he's on the, uh, it's uh, ketosis. Okay. It's a thing of, it's like. That's what the. What Big Cat and PFT did, Correct. where they pee and they yes. chest it, pee. Yes, it's a lot of check it. Well, I, you don't need... The only thing I know about that diet is that they pee. So, my understanding of it is you don't have to check your pee that often. I think that they just kept going off the diet and then would check their pee to be like, oh, fuck, I, now I'm back on it for a day. Is it working again? Ah, oh, fuck, it's not working yet. <laughs> So they, I think that they were just measuring whether or not their body was in ketosis. Okay. Um, but I think that if you're actually doing the diet correctly, once you're in ketosis, as long as you're not cheating on it, your body's not going to magically jump out of it. Okay. So um, that's what, what is that diet though? It's Do you like know? Uh, your body is just doing shit. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. It's it's you're Sounds getting neat. your body to do shit. Uh, Sounds so, like it's not for me. Yeah. It's it's weird. Um, but anyway, so he's in that. He doesn't eat carbs. They get pizza one night, mm. drunkenly. And this is the best part of the episode, other than the thunder part. But uh, they're, they're very drunk. They're eating pizza. And Vinny, because he's on the ketosis diet, never really drinks anymore. So he's super drunk. And they get pizza. And he's just picking the pepperoni off of it and the cheese and just, like, bringing it up to his face. And they're just looking at him like they want to fucking kill him. And they're all really fucking drunk. And Paul is like... Paul? Uh, Paulie. He, I thought you said, said Paul. Yeah. He, uh, he is... He's aged. He's mature. He he's goes by Paul now. Yes, Paul. Uh, no, Paul, he's like... Vinny, uh, cut that shit out, dude. Eat the crust. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> fucking funny. Uh, so... I jumped on... Uh, wait, are you still going? Uh, well, I'll say, uh, I'll fill you in on Ronnie. Ronnie explains what's happening with Sammy, uh, because Sammy's not in this. Yes. They, re- they replace her with a sex doll that, uh, is like a, a toy doll where you press it and it says, uh, Sammy thing. Was that so, a sex doll? Because it looked yeah. like a, like a actual, like, robot. So, it's like I, one of those high tech sex, sex dolls. Doll. So you press it and it's like, I'm the sweetest bitch you'll ever meet. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Ronnie explains what's going on with Sammy. He says that they moved in together. She gave him a timeline for when they wanted to get married and uh, that he ended up choosing to not go, to not continue with the relationship. Specifically, quote, I ended up cheating. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I made the de- like it was like yeah. part of it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I made the decision not to, uh, I wanted to get out of that. So, uh, so I, I, did, I did what I had to do. It was <laughs> a cheated. mutual split. I cheated. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what he says. He's like, I had to decide, like, it was, like, put up or shut up time. Uh, and then I got I caught cheating. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that is a there great spin. Way great of, spin. of shutting up, which was to just end the relationship. Yes. And he, he's like, I, I, ch- I cheated and she caught me. <laughs> so you didn't need to tell any of the part about she gave a timeline for marriage. That's uh, awesome. But he chose to do that. Uh, Paul E.D. is 37. Really? Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, Vinny does a move that I do. That I do. Um, he does this thing. Um 
where he's dancing, and he ex- they show it, and then he explains it after. Oh uh, yeah, I, I saw this clip on Twitter where uh, as the beat is building, he's acting like there's, there's a, a door, locked door in front and of he's him. trying to get in, and he's like knocking, he's stopping and thinking, he's scratching his head, getting a little frustrated, a little banging on the door, and then when the beat drops, kicks the door open and goes wild. That's the thing that I do. Is you're you, probably thinking you've done that before? You do that dance move? No. <laughs> I do a thing where I'll do a dance move and then explain it after. Oh, yeah. You definitely <laughs> so do that. I, yeah, like watching him be like, there's a dance move I like to do, blah, blah. I'm like, this guy's fucking speaking my language. I wouldn't be caught dead doing that dance move, but I for sure do things like that. Okay. Yeah. So is that where uh, is that, this where see. I jump in? Uh, then my next thing is what would a brunch style reality show be like? Explain We've already that. touched on that. Now, uh, what happens the rest of the way? Ooh, so let me tell you a story. When I jumped in, uh, they were talking about dead dads. And that was a really oh weird, pl- really weird place to hop in. Uh, not what I expected, and there was a lot of dead dad talk. When we initially were going to do the uh, to split it up uh, hour by hour, uh, no, and initially when we were just gonna watch it, uh, we were watching the Bruins game, and I was like, let's just both flip to it, DVR it where it is, and we'll watch the rest of the way. But then. Because I thought it was on at 9. This was at like 9.15. And I was like, all right, so it's only an hour long episode. Then it ended up being two hours, so couldn't do that. But if we had done that, I was going to have to start from a point where uh, Dina is crying, being like, I just miss him so much. And I was going to be like, that is a fucking whopper of a place to begin. <laughs> it seems that that is where you That began. is where I began. Yeah. Uh, I started at a point where it was like, wow. These people are fucking old. And maybe it was just like that was the whole episode, I guess. Uh, but like I started with Dina talking about her dad dying and everybody was sad. And then I got a lot of like I miss my baby talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of um, like here's how old I am mm-hmm. and I don't drink anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Very bold by MTV to be like these people, moms, mm-hmm. some of them don't drink. And uh, most of them are in relationships. Like Ronnie's got a is Ronnie getting married? Do you know he's having he has a, kid. a baby, Mama. He's got a he's got a baby on the way. So it's that was it was a gamble by MTV, like really rolling the dice, being like, let's throw these absolute animals who were known for just fucking around and getting absolutely wasted and doing and basically ruining their lives, mm-hmm. and let's bring them back. Where like they seem to be in pretty good places, all of them, and then just throw them in a house again. Peter, 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 Peter. Yes, you are missing that they are simply doing the classic John Wick dynamic, hmm? which is to start with all of these people who you know have put in a lot of time drinking, carousing, even merrymaking. Yeah. And it starts off with them saying, I don't do that stuff anymore. That's not me. That's the old me. I'm out of the game. And then within like two episodes, (laughs) bam, two of them die. (laughs) (laughs) They have a puppy in the house. That puppy's for sure going to die. Do they have a puppy in the house? No. Oh, It's a John Wick joke. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, But I think that's seriously what they're doing. They're trying to be like, oh, we've uh, Snooky. Is a responsible mom now. I'm sure she is in that moment. <laughs> Not gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, how far can they really go on that? Because like, wouldn't you feel bad watching Ronnie just like fucking tear it up with random ass girls in a club, knowing that he's got a kid on the way? Well, like that, like that's that that's entertaining to watch when it's when <laughs> he doesn't really have anything to lose. Like Sammy is like yeah. his girlfriend, but. When it's when it's like an off-screen baby mama yeah. who's carrying his child yeah. about like eight months pregnant, mm-hmm. probably feel a little guilty watching that. When Mike's got a goddamn court date coming yeah. up, you really want to watch him snap out of like his twenty-eight right. month sobriety. He's from gonna hit a cop pills. at some point. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'll ask this question right after this uh, fun little interruption because I tweeted. Uh, at the uh, eat the fucking pizza <laughs> thing, someone responded just now. <laughs> Apparently, one of them said, "If you look up the most asshole way to eat a pizza, right there." <laughs> 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 Terrific. All right, so now I'm going to ask this question. I had written this down in my notes as well. Uh, who is the stupidest person uh, of the Jersey Shore cast? Ooh, oh man. Uh, 
I think it's Ronnie. It is so Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. Because at like the, Mike plays himself as the stupidest person, right. but like And they all do stupid he, shit. I mean, they're all dumb. Yeah. They're all dumb yes. to like a certain extent. I think Paulie is sneakily uh not as dumb as he seems. Uh I think I think Jay Wow is like is not that dumb. Like I would put them two as like the smarter two in the house. I would no, I I would venture to guess that uh Vinny was an A student. Yeah, but I don't think he's smart. Right, true. Yeah. I, think, I, I guess like he's just uh he he's more of a decent person. He is the he is the most presentable. Yes, for sure. Um but Ronnie he's just got it's like in his eyes. It's in his face. He's yes. so fucking dumb. He is dead inside. <laughs> yeah, like he's like the dumbest fucking guy. And really, I don't he's care like, what that guy says. I, I'm having a kid. I'm with the girl. He's She's always great. going to be They're a cheater. Like, You're so fucking dumb. And oh he, he's yeah, always going to be a cheater. The second he showed up, he oh th- they bring out the doll, and he was like, "If I smash this doll, <laughs> this account is cheating." <laughs> I actually had that conversation uh, when I went to New York. Uh, Casey Casey Smith. Yep. Uh, me and her got in like a a decent argument about whether it's cheating if you have sex with a a sex doll. No. That's what I that's what I think. I, I I don't know if Casey was on my side now that I think about it. There were definitely like people who were very much saying that it was cheating. Hmm. They were they basically said that like it's like having sex with a prostitute. Because you're like there's no emotional connection and you're not like you're not. You're not like emotionally cheating when you have sex with a prostitute, but still like the physical act of cheating is there. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Like it's one is if having it's not sex human, with a live person. Yeah. If it's not other... human, I don't think it's cheating. Ugh. I no. don't want to think about it. But uh Yeah. <laughs> uh off the pizza thing, did you notice that the place that they that they ordered pizza from it was on the box, it said pizza and pasta. Yeah. I did notice that actually. Yeah? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Because like inside, deep inside, in my bones, if I'm ordering a pizza, I don't want it to say any other food on the box. If it's pasta, they're saying that they're an Italian place. I get that, but like if you're a pizza place, you should be an Italian place. I want to order pizza from a place that does pizza and nothing else. Like, that's so that that's a very fair point, but um, like they can do other stuff. Right. I don't want them advertising that they do anything else. So you sound like. Uh, you're like the Donald Sterling of uh, pizza right now. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's like they, they can they you can, can do it. You can just go. Just don't advertise keep it. Off it. The box. Don't advertise. Just don't it. put it on. Don't the put box. it on social media. That guy, man, he was an old racist guy. Oh, yeah. Is what he was mm. uh, to to fill everyone in on on Donald <laughs> Sterling. If they missed that saga, you can uh, we can give you some literature on Wikipedia. Um, no, I don't know. It just made the pizza looked good. I think the pizza is the best. A pizza and chicken look better on TV than any other food. I don't know about chicken. I think pizza and burgers. Burgers are a big one. So I've been wa- I've been rewatching Thirty Rock of late. Uh, huge shame on Hulu. Hulu does not go and play the next episode. Really? That's that like the one thing that you problem. do. That's like the one requirement of a streaming service is at just immediately on, go to the next episode. At least on uh, even on my de- iPad. Even uh, even like Xfinity On Demand. Yeah, when it I, knows what's up. When I exit out, it's like, you want to watch the next episode? Yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah, Xfinity like, yeah, On Demand. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you haven't watched 30 Rock, have you? Uh, no. You have to. You would love I'd probably it. love it. I'm sure that it's, it's, it's an I undertaking. I am balls but... deep in the the good place right now and i'm loving it Ooh, i never did that so you should do it it's still on tv there's only two seasons i'm not used to being in a good place that's true but uh i won't spoil it for you uh but side note xfinity on demand low-key thick because that shit is awesome oh yeah it's the best like they have taken like i know everybody loves to fucking complain about comcast and their customer service oh no wrong comcast does not suck yeah comcast is the good shit now yeah, especially that goddamn remote that you speak into. Oh yeah, life changing. And so. not to brag, I get a really yeah, uh, interesting deal because I work for them, and I went to pick up. I went to get another cable box because I'm putting a TV in my room. Ooh, doing well. Not to brag, I'm yeah. also going to do that in about a month. So I really didn't want to do that. I haven't done that uh, in like five years. I haven't Kept done a it TV since college. In the room. Yeah, because I I'm really looking forward to it. Though. I firmly believe in like the the room. Is for two things: sleeping and, and snacking. <laughs> yep, yeah, and eating. Uh, great line in Thirty Rock is uh, Liz Lemon, uh, Tina Fey, 
finds out that her best friend and ex-boyfriend have been sleeping with each other. And she's totally okay with it because she's like, he's out of my life, whatever. You're a grown-ass woman. Do what you want. And uh, he's upset that it's not getting her upset. So he's trying to say stuff that'll make her mad. And he's like, we did it this time. We did it that time. We did it that time. She's like, you guys are both adults. And then he's like, we did it in your bed. She goes, come on, guys. I eat in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's a great line. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but yeah, I put a TV in there, picked up another kale box. It was so cheap. It was, it was like, what a fun little deal I have. Anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we Go have on. to talk. We have to talk about the the Imagine Dragons. Oh yes, the Thunder played a huge role in the premiere of Jersey Shore. Uh, comes out when they're out to lunch with each other, mm-hmm. and oh boy, does that song register an emotional connection with Snooky? <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. I could not have written that any better. Yeah, uh, Snooky immediately starts bawling when she hears um, uh, Thunder by Imagine Dragons playing because it is her son's. Absolute favorite song. But first, Dina remarks, I like, I like this song. I like, I like the, the beat. I like the beat. Like, she talks over people at the table. Yeah. They were in the middle of a conversation. She's yeah. like, I like this song. About uh, how their fake breasts work. Yes, yeah. that's true. If you're, uh, if they they're have breastfeeding asking, capabilities. Yeah, they were actually asking questions that like were stupid questions. But when they were asking them, I was like, that's a stupid question. Oh, what's, what's the, the answer, answer to that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that they they filmed this like very recently, so this is like Dude, fresh tape. Thunder isn't like an dying. Yeah, like it's, it is not right. dying. It's not dying. It's still. I think that when Thunder comes on, people are like, "Ooh, I like this song." But it has been six months of that. It has easily been six months. And of they've that. released like six hundred songs since that. They've released. Yeah, the I know. Break me off. They piece perform- of that believer. No, that was before. Definitely really? wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I think that I think the believer was before that. Um, but they they just performed a song at the uh, at the national championship, the final four. Oh, really? For March Madness, and it was fucking terrible. Break me off piece of that believer was before Thunder. Okay. Since then, they have released whatever it takes. Uh, next to me, just those two songs. I think they performed whatever it takes, and it was very bad. Hmm. So yeah, so I, they they did this recent. They were they filmed Jersey Shore recently, and boy, Dina uh, w- just had to remark that she loved that song, and it set Snooky off. Snooky started crying. JWoww started crying, mm-hmm. all shedding tears over the art of Imagine Dragons. What a it moment for brunch! Warmed my <laughs> yes. heart so much. And when you got to it, you texted me like, "Oh my like, god!" Oh my god! Didn't no context. It was oh man. Should we? Uh, do we have to get uh, Snooky on the podcast now and talk to her exclusively about Imagine Dragons? No, because we've already had someone cry on our podcast when Thunder was playing. So, shouts out Kellen. Uh, I had one more thing. Fuck, what was it? Um, God damn it. Um, Did you notice that when the situation showed up? Where is this, by the way? I tune in late, so I didn't get to catch it. Was it uh, in Miami? Miami, I think. Okay. Uh, when the situation showed up in Miami, mm-hmm. he had a hickey on his neck. Did he? Yeah, he had a hickey on his neck, and... Like the next... you looking at his fat face. <laughs> yeah. But like I thought it was funny because he had a hickey on his neck and they spent the next 20 minutes talking about like how changed he is. And I was like, well, hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Th- so they haven't seen this guy in forever. They don't talk to him. The only thing they know about him recently is that he's going to go to jail for tax evasion. And in their head, they're like, he's doing so much better than the last time <laughs> yeah, we saw him. Uh, and like... Because the like, sad thing is, is that yeah. might be true, right? Because they were like, "Mike, how are you doing?" And he's like, "Great, how are you?" I'm like, "Wow, this guy <laughs> has cleaned up his act. <laughs> he, is, he didn't even I, hit me at all." I know. It's. I mean, like, it is kind of sad to think that, like, the situation is probably going to jail for up to five years, mm-hmm. and he can say that he's doing the best that he's been in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been. I mean, there's been like a lot of rumors about the situation over the years since Jersey Shore has gone off the gone off the air. Like there was like the herpes rumor, which mm. I would a hundred percent believe <laughs> was the rumor. I bet he has herpes. <laughs> yeah, uh, and like just like he's gotten in fights and he's a drug addict and like there's just been like like he's had a tumultuous time since leaving the Jersey Shore. I don't know what the latest is. So they 
Is he just like awaiting trial? He's awaiting no, no, trial because no, he, he's April. guilty. Yeah, but he's still awaiting. Uh, it, whether it's like he's awaiting trial or sentencing, he's huh. awaiting something later in April. Interesting. Well, break me off a piece of that believer. Prayers up to the situation. It also led me to a uh, thought. Um, why can't taxes just be automatic? Yeah, just take them from me. Like, so I was thinking about this. Just I, we, there's an obvious answer. Like, we can get to it, I guess. But like, no, but I was thinking about it because I was like, huh. Uh, like I could, I think we've discussed this in the past. Like I can for sure see myself going to jail or getting in trouble for tax evasion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just because I don't want to do that shit. Right. There's a lot of shit that I don't want to do. And you know what? I just don't do it until it comes back and bites me in the ass. Right. Yeah. And I can for sure seeing that happen with my taxes because I'm not ready to be an adult. Um, but I looked into it. He he didn't like he wasn't negligent. Right. I he was too. fraud. Yeah. Yeah. He was right. Scamming the shit out of right. the government. So I was like, yeah, there's. I could never accidentally do that. But, like, why do we have to fill shit out? Why don't... They, so they send us W-2s, our employers. Why don't they just send that to the, right to the fucking IRS? And why don't they just... I don't, I don't know. Cut out the middle, man. Fucking, yeah. Like, have a... They can know how much we spend in rent and all that stuff. Just you guys all the, the fucking man has all of our information anyway. So just fucking just use ask it. Facebook, right? Exactly. Um, the answer to that is because then people would just start doing everything with cash and avoiding that. To which I say, cool. get rid of cash. No, I'm down with cash. Like no, I'm saying if I'm saying they wouldn't be able to do that because. Oh, we, people we would scam it, it with cash? Right, yeah. Okay. So your job would be like, hey, you're not an employer of ours, quote unquote, and then just send you cash. Get rid of cash. Cash stinks. Ah, I like cash. I like paying with cold hard cash sometimes. It's uh, Now it's become like a nostalgic thing. Yeah. <laughs> like when I want to feel like I'm in the good old days, I'll pay with cash. Yeah. But I hate fucking tax season. It's the, And it's only, it's usually like three things. I just got to send my CPA a W-2, tell them what I paid in rent miles anything that i might want to write off and that's it and i'm like ah it's gonna take fucking forever i always fucking lose my w-2 i have it sent to the wrong fucking address it's always a big fucking thing oh i got a uh, little area of concern in my face right now oh you feel it that's Take like the worst yeah doesn't happen every day let me see uh oh, i see it yeah. I see it from across the table. Mm. Uh, that's like one of the worst feelings in the world. Uh, getting a pimple sucks, but you know what sucks worse than getting a pimple? Uh, the feeling when it first comes on and yeah. it's not there yet, but you know it's coming. It's like getting a cold. It's like yeah, it's the worst um, because you know it's coming and there's nothing you can do about it. Speaking of nostalgia, uh, one thing that I will be getting on vinyl is Casey Musgraves' new album. I don't want to get too too crazy on it because. Um, it's um I already know that it's gonna get uh three billboards where it came out and it's really good and I love it and it's awesome, but people immediately go way too far and saying they're saying it's like, it's the, like greatest. the greatest album in the world. It's not the greatest nah. album in the world. I like it a lot, it's a really enjoyable album. It is I I put a bunch of it on the uh Spotify on the new Spotify playlist, I load oh, that shit. shit up. I load that shit up. Really? Yeah, I put on a few songs from this. What the fuck? I now put you can't on joke like about 60 it. Sixty Sarah Bareilles songs. I put on a million Father John Misty songs, and that's basically all it is. Um, well, now the pressure's on me because I right. I haven't been updating it because you haven't been updating. Right, it. but it'll be just like a thing that whatever we're listening to, we'll throw it on there. And if we remember to put stuff on there, we do. And if not, fucking suck one. Just relax. Um, so. It's really good though. It's cool. It's uh, I I said, and this is a just fucking bang on amazing point by me. In fact, I need to bring it up to one of my friends. Uh, who's a big music guy. Every now and then, I'll make a really good point, and he'll be like, "Fuck, man, that's such a good point." I'm gonna say this to him, and he's gonna say that. So this is the name of the episode: analogies and points. Analogies and points. Yeah, it's the things that analogies, points, and Adam's apples. <laughs> DJ strengths. The only three strengths of DJ. The only. Only three strengths. Um, but it's that it's the some nights of country music. Okay. In that it's a uh, talented, good artist, uh, super, super accessible, super duper overproduced, yeah. but in a good way. Like, yeah. I I like it a lot. Like, 
I like my country music to be like underproduced. I like oh, yeah, I like that's the country, what it should I, be. Yeah, I like cu- my country music raw. Yeah. Um but this has fucking vocoders. Yeah. Her fucking vocals are like tuned to the fucking T. But like to me it doesn't sound like a country album that's like that's that is overproduced. It sounds to be like a pop album that has a tint of country in it, yeah. which I think you can get away with when it's overproduced that way. Because like it, it it's cringeworthy when you like try to present yourself as like as straight up country right. and then you're way overproduced. But if you're going for a pop album like Taylor Swift, like yeah. she had t- pop albums with a little bit of country mixed in right. um, to like embrace her roots or whatever. So uh, I listened to like the first half of the album. Mm-hmm. No complaints. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Bar- uh, Borellis. Uh, it was in, yeah. uh, what was it? The song that I, uh, Butterflies. You said Butterflies. Uh, and I also hear it in, um, I would say there's, I hear a lot of Borellis and I hear a lot of Nora Jones. Um, okay. Like, but her stuff that she's done with Thun, uh, not Thundercat, uh, Danger Mouse. And this album makes me want Casey Musgraves to do an album with Danger Mouse. Um, what song is it? I forget. But there's a song that's like just like uh, the Nora Jones song, Happy Pills, and it's great. Um, but yeah, it's like she's not going for straight up country. I think that much like, uh, like a Sturgill Simpson, it's rooted in country. And she's not necessarily trying to be like top forty or anything, but she's trying to do a non-country thing, like uh, either either venturing into like psychedelic stuff or yeah. m- like more rock stuff. Uh, certainly, like pop rock shit like that. And it's good. It just touches it. It it touches a lot of the bases. Uh, the song that I would recommend most probably probably butterflies. Or Oh What a World, I love. Oh What a World was really good too. Yeah. Um, a uh, I I I this is like my first exposure to Casey Musgraves, so I have no idea like what she's done in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say, she and Marin Morris are like got to be up there for like two of the best uh, like pop country. I don't know enough uh, Marin Morris. I Marin just Morris knew those is two songs. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Mary Morris. Yeah, I, I mostly plead ignorance on her, but I liked uh, 80s Mercedes and whatever the other song was. My Church? Um, I don't know. 